Today, I'm going to be talking about my Facebook ads experiment. I've been running a couple of different ads uh, for Facebook. Actually, I've been running ads for a long time on Facebook. Pretty much, if you know about me, you've probably heard about me because you saw an ad or a promotion that I did, and that's how you found me. It's kind of the strategy I use. So I know I talk to a lot of people on the podcast. I have for many years, and they either haven't had luck with Facebook advertising or they just, uh, they don't like to advertise because it's expensive, especially if, you know, it's it's hard to try out at first. So I wanted to go over this new method because I don't like paying for it either. So I wanted to go over this new method that I'm testing out for $1 a day. So these weren't ads that have gotten me huge results. They're ads where I'm like, holy crap, they're getting a lot of results for a dollar. Now I'm going to expand on those. So I'm going to walk through that. So the ads, the old way that I used to do them, they worked great. Uh, I used Facebook ads and later on Instagram ads, which ended up working better in the long run uh, to help find an audience, to help find an audience for my podcast, for my band, and also for the pop culture and retro stuff that I've been selling that I enjoy collecting and like selling and also make a lot of money from that and also learned how to use carts because of that. It's one of the main reasons I did it because I didn't know how to use online carts. So I just needed something to sell and something that would sell. So <laughs> so I used that. And uh, so what I used to do is I had image ads. Uh, that's the way I used to run them. They'd, I'd create an image for something to go, you know, here's an, here's an image that would capture the eye. Then there would be a headline and I'd write different headlines, try out different headlines. That actually was a big part of it. There were, I could run the same image over and over again, change the headline. And sometimes it would do better or sometimes it would do worse than it. Like I'd go, maybe I could write something better and then it would do worse. But the headline actually really made a difference. That was kind of surprising to me. So I tested that stuff out. Then I found out that uh, what I would normally do is I'd have this ad. It would be a picture, a headline, and it would send people to a landing page or my website or something to do something. If they did click through to see more, then they're clearly curious about it. If they didn't, then I didn't have to pay for the click. That was fine. Um, so I would send them to this page and then ask them to put in their email. Well, during that time, the thought process would be like, ah, maybe they changed their mind or it's like, I'm not going to enter my email. Is that what I came here for? And then they'd go away. So then I found out about lead ads on Facebook and that was where it would be the same ad with the same headline and go click to find out more. It would open up, it would have some text and a form and the form would be pre-filled out with the email that they use for Facebook. So they wouldn't even have to enter an email and they wouldn't have to leave the site, sort of. Uh, it would open up the lead ad and the lead ad would become one of those things where it's not on the feed, it wouldn't open up on the feed, it would be a pop-up window. So that was really cool too. The, that was a great way to have people just go, yeah, I'll sign up. And then later on, if they got an email from me, they'd be like, what's this? Or, oh yeah, that's that thing I signed up for. There you go. That worked out great. Uh, but back then when I did this, the minimum you or the minimum I could spend on Facebook ads, like again, I didn't want to spend a lot, was $5 a day. That was the minimum. You couldn't do any less a day to run an ad. So I'd try to see how much I could get for five dollars a day and different ads ran for different prices the lead ads actually cost a little costed a little bit more um, but they were the most successful I would say um, anyway so five dollars a day was the way I used to have to do it and uh, again all I needed was to write a headline do an image and try and build an audience which is something that I'm always trying to do it's I'm never this is gonna be a bad sentence but I the way I already have it laid out in my head. I'm never not trying to build an audience. I'm never not trying to build an audience. I'm never not, not trying to not build an audience. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just messing with myself. Um, anyway, so, so I'm, uh, that's one of my main objectives. I'm always every day trying to go like, how can I find more people? How can I interact with more people? How can I find more artists? You know, uh, different things like that, or people who are interested in the same things that I am. So I'm always running. That's why I run ads a lot. I still, I still got results from these when I ran them recently, but they, like I said, they just were too expensive. The ads got, they got really expensive. The easiest ad, which would just be a image ad, click to go here and find out more. Those were the ones that were usually relatively cheap. Uh, now they were going for like 
barely under a dollar. They were costing me so much that, that I wasn't going to find many people. That's the same as I may as well go out and just meet people. The main reason that this happened was there's the audience restrictions for targeting that Facebook had done, which that wasn't really that big of a problem for me. It was just that it just seemed like because of that, the way ads were run by other people ran the cost up because of the way they had to switch their targeting now. Like the way I did it in the past was very was very off of what most people do. I didn't go like find people who are interested in art. I would do like find people that are interested in libraries because, you know, they would want to read or, you know, and then the ad itself would be, it's about artists and they go, I go to the library to read about artwork or I have a program, you know, stuff like that. Like I, I would do it broadly like that and then have the ad be the text of the ad be what explaining what that person might be interested in, in that category. Like say I walk into a coffee shop, I could put up an advertisement for a podcast or a show. Anyway, that was the method. So the audience wasn't a big thing for me. The fact that the restrict, the restrictions happened. Um, it was, it was nice and it was, I could really niche down to like the first season of this podcast, I tell the story all the time. I ran a lead ad, or a sign up. Uh, yeah. A lead ad to run 25 miles around my, uh, around my block. I think it was 25 miles, something like that around my actual house, looking for artists to sign up for the podcast. The niche audience thing was really nice, but it, it hasn't hindered me since they switched it. So, um, I tested a few things here and there. I tested the old method that I was telling you about before. And those were just not $1. A, oh, that's the other thing. Facebook now lets you, because of these restrictions, um, I can actually set up ads to run for just $1 a day. So instead of testing things for $5 a day, like I was doing in the past, I was able to test them for $1 a day, which is much easier. If I can find stuff where I just, I just look at it and go, okay, that's these clicks are costing me under a dollar. I test it for one day, just see if it works or two days. And if it doesn't, then I turn it off, try a different one. And that's what I've been doing. And some of them didn't work. A lot of the old methods did not work. Some of them wouldn't even run because it said, it basically it said, You're, this click is going to be over a dollar. We can't run it. it is, I was getting that. So I'm like, mm, I got to find a different way to do it. So I tested out a few things. And one thing I realized that uh, ads are much lower cost now on Facebook if I keep them on Facebook. I used to, like I said, create an image, run them off the site to a landing page. And now those, it's like, well, you're leaving Facebook. And also because they don't have the Facebook pixel to track what they do anymore, which is one of the restrictions. They're like, well, that's of no value to us. If you go off the site, we don't know what they're doing after they click on that. We don't know what kind of site you run. And so now that's more expensive to go. You're leaving Facebook. We have no info anymore. So that's when it got me to thinking. What I did was I... I, in the past few years, including this podcast, what I'm doing right now and with my band and with my retro and pop culture stuff, I make videos for all of them. I document drawing as well. Like my web comic, I've done drawing streams. I've done the, what I sold or going out to estate sales and finding old stuff in strange different towns or this podcast. I've, uh, you know, I record this. And I've also kind of taken sections that I really like or sections that I think are really kind of, I didn't know that and wanted to share it just instead of listening to the whole podcast episode. I create clips. So I have those. So here's what I did. And I, I first did this on Facebook. Um, I want to, I want people to watch these videos. I want more people to see them instead of sending them somewhere and going, Hey, learn more. Hey, I do this podcast. Hey, go check it out over here. I mean, technically that this actually all turned around in the sense like, why was I doing it this way to begin with? So what I started doing, can I get people to watch these videos? If you go to business.facebook.com and uh, set up an ad account, which is where I run my stuff, I can actually upload a video. It's not something that I even have on my Facebook page. It's I upload it as a standalone post and it's a video. So I tested it out first with my band. I, I, uh, I kind of looked at some of the popular videos that I had and, and I also tested it out later on with the podcast after I did this, but I tested it out with my band first. Cause I had a music video. We had a show coming up and I wanted to repurpose what I had. 
what I had already put out, what I didn't want to create more work or a new thing. So I took this video and it was actually doing well. It was a brand new video doing well. So I uploaded it to Facebook as an ad, as a, as a watch video ad. And I only had it show on the Facebook feed and the Facebook watch page. I created the video campaign and the campaign type that I use, this is this. So this is what was different. This was why it was hard for me. And then I learned later on, like, ah, oh, this was much smarter. The entire concept was I, I ran it as a video through play campaign. Now, all that means is that I pay for when somebody watches more than half of the video. So even, even uh, some people scrolling through, it'll play for three seconds. Some people watch for 10 seconds. All I did was uh, set of through campaign, video through campaign, video through play campaign. There you go. That's what it's called. And I was getting, I, I, first of all, I was surprised that I was actually getting people watching more than halfway through. And when they did, that's when the ad cost me something. And what it cost me was three cents a video through. And I was like, I was running one and that's on average. So sometimes it was one cent. Sometimes it was three cents and I was doing it for $1 a day. This was a good price for me. I liked it a lot. And then I tested it out with uh, one of my podcast clips that I had. Did that, same result. And then I did another one with one of my, uh, one of my retro shows. I actually just started doing that one, uh, I want to say last week. And that one is also doing okay. For that one, it's a little bit longer. It's like 15 minutes. So the through play is actually still around. It's more like a quarter of the way through. It doesn't, it doesn't go like, okay, we're going to play up to seven minutes of this video. That's, it doesn't do it that way, but it still takes quite a while. It's not the first couple of seconds. So it's more than just a scroll through and watch for a second and then move on. So I was getting these great results and I was like, okay, then I started uh, in the ads. I would at least at the top where you would where I would post like the comment or what it's about or a short thing there, I would put a link to, you know, go here to subscribe. And that would go to my landing page. Sometimes that would get click throughs. Actually, I don't know if it's getting click throughs because that's one of the things that can't be tracked as well anymore. So some, I, I would get more, you know, visits on the landing page than it said that I did. Um, but I would put that there and that's not one of the objectives for the ad. So people would click and go to the landing page and, I was only paying for the video throughs. Now, what do I do with that? Uh, I created an audience after I get like a thousand views, which I think I want to say it only took me a week to get a thousand through plays, maybe. Because at that point, then I can create an audience. And that audience I can create, here's where I do an image ad, do a picture of that video and go, you know... Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember what I said, but I'm going to say something like, uh, remember this video or did you enjoy this video? You can see more on this website and then it would send them to the subscribe page. Now that went back to the way that I was doing them. It was the second step, but it was people who already saw the video, people who actually sat and watched and they would retain what happened. Now, these ads, when I first ran them, I did them as conversion types, which is what Facebook suggests that I do. Um, and I would send them away. Those were expensive again. Not bad expensive. I was still targeting the audience that actually did like what I was doing. But uh, it was still, I was like, I, there's got to be a cheaper way. So I messed around with some stuff some more. And then I realized, well, having them like my Facebook page is just as good. Or I guess it's called follow now. Follow my Facebook page is just as good. So... You know, because then on there, I can go, hear some stuff I do. They see more posts and then they can decide whether or not to stick around and follow me or learn more about what I do if they follow the page. That got me to thinking is, okay, I'm going to run a an image ad like that, but I'm going to do it as an engagement campaign. Now, an engagement campaign is literally a campaign that goes, hey, follow this page or here's a picture or some sort of snippet that I make just like a regular ad. And all people have to do is go, okay, that sounds interesting. I'll follow it. And now it'll show up in the pages that I follow. I ran the same ad that I was running on the other one because it was still doing well. And this is all still going to the audience that watched my videos. Meanwhile, I'm still running that video ad and getting new people every day and still building the audience. So this is working in the background while I'm testing this out. I set this up as, as an engagement ad and just expected to maybe I'll get some Facebook likes and see how much that costs. Um, what started happening is people were clicking on the link that I still kept in there and going to the landing page. 
And that was viewed as an engagement. It wasn't viewed as a conversion going off the site, or at least that's my theory on it because the ads were cheaper. They were around the price that they used to be back in the day when all I did was run image ads. I, I got a few follows. Oddly enough, the engagement that it was set up for, which was follows for my page, were only a few, which I found funny, but I got more signups for my email list or I got more subscribes to the podcast, depending on what they chose on the landing page that I have. So these were going for around, I want to say 30 cents in interaction. Yeah. Yeah, I think 30 cents an interaction, which that's fine. Uh, like I said, that it, or like I've said, the 30 cents is an average, so it would be below or up, but I was getting, I was getting quite a few a day and I was running these at uh, $1 a day and then I bumped it up to two just because I'm like, well, I could double this and it's not breaking the bank. So the outcome was just that I was getting 30, did I say 30 or 20? Either way, I was getting a good amount for the uh, for the amount of engagements that I was getting. And in the meantime, they were people that already knew about me. I didn't have to try to sell them on something that they've never heard of before with a, with a go here to sign up. They had seen a video and said, oh, I enjoyed that video. And that's what happened. So I've been doing that. And it, it I mean, it, think about this. And this is why I wanted to share it. Because it's like, yeah, I make videos with the podcast and uh, the retro toys and stuff that I sell and with the music videos that I make. And also I've been doing live streaming with the band where we just play, we make up songs live and interact with people. I have those videos, but I follow people all the time that make videos on uh, Instagram or uh, do stories and all that kind of stuff. And it just got me to thinking like if, if, if other people are making these videos and they, their videos do well just organically and, and I, so I wanted to just kind of share like, well, here's what I've been doing with my videos on top of that. And maybe, maybe it'll spark some ideas. Um, one of the things that I have noticed is that, um, the best videos or the best length of the videos that I've been using are three minutes to 15 minutes. And that's cause it gets better through play. So I just wanted to share it because I know a lot of people that I follow and people that I've talked to and people that I've had on the podcast do make videos and they post them to social networks. I post a lot of mine on YouTube. So I have a whole library of stuff that I, I just go through and I look at the analytics of it and go, what are some of the more popular videos and kind of run with those. And that's why I chose like the first three that I tested here and I'm going to continue doing this. And I really in, am just super excited about it. Now, uh, I'm also, that got me thinking too is, so it's the stay on the platform idea. So what I'm going to do in the next one, and this is kind of where I'm going to lead to next time, depending on, you know, if you enjoy this, uh, I just wanted to share it. And I have another thing I've been testing out and that's with YouTube ads right on YouTube. So it's the whole concept of keeping people on the platform. Well, what about people watching videos? I want mine to be the one that's suggested next. So I looked into a way to do that. I've been, t I, I just started testing that out this week and the very second day I was running $1 a day campaign. I was getting better results than I was on uh, Facebook, and that was just with videos. I haven't found a way to remarket it yet the way that I did with the fine people that watched it, but there is a way. So I haven't tested that yet. That's why I don't want to talk about that right now, because I don't have the end results. But right now, the video view results have been great. And uh, because of it, again, $1 a day, I actually get subscribers from people who watch this video just because it was suggested on YouTube. So I want to talk about that next time. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I talked about today, or if you want me to expand on anything, please let me know. You can leave a comment or you can uh, go to my website, go to tomrayswebsite.com slash about. Right there at the top, there will be a dumb picture of my face. And then underneath that is my email address. So you can click on that, send me a message. Uh, and while you're there, why not sign up for the email list? There you go. This whole thing is about finding people to join the list please let me know if you have any questions about what I did or like what are your biggest questions or things that weren't clear or you'd like me to expand upon that I talked about today. Otherwise, um, go to my website too is if you're an artist and would like to be on the show, let me know, contact me. I'm gonna be starting a new season of uh, talking to other artists and find out what they do very soon. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks so much for listening to the show and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.